Okay, we got our guitar body stripped down and I'm gonna sand it and get it ready to paint. I have to excuse all the clutter in the background. The shop's in a mess and it needs to be cleaned up. And I guess I should be doing that instead of working on my guitar, but it's a weekend and I enjoy doing this stuff. So what I'm gonna do. All right, got my DA sander, 320 grit paper on it. Just gonna hit over the flat parts enough to dull it down so the paint will stick and then around the edges I'm going to sand down into the wood. As you can see right here we've already gone through the paint down into the wood and we're getting some of this yellowish color off of there so whenever some of that red that we're going to put on top comes off you'll be able to see this down through there and it'll actually look worn. gone over my guitar with 320 grit sandpaper on the DA. You can see I've knocked down some spots where you can see the wood. You've got different shades of the white paint where it's yellowed over the years. And the parts that I did not do with DA 320 grit sandpaper, I used a red 3M Scotch Brite pad. You can get these at any auto parts place that carries paint supplies to about a 400 grit piece of sandpaper. But they're real flexible. You can fold them up, get down in all your little curves in places that sandpaper won't go. Rather than just beating on it with a hammer, trying to make it look relic. Here I go talking on my hands again. But anyway, since those marks are already there, I'm going to take a couple little things, maybe a razor knife, uh, maybe a small chisel, don't really know, just whatever you got laying around the house. I'm going to take something and these marks that are already here, I'm going to go ahead and make them a little more pronounced than what they are. But what I'm doing now is going over the guitar, just got a couple little simple tools. Got a uh, razor knife, box cutter, whatever you'll call it, and a little chisel. And I'm just looking around the guitar for marks that are already there. Just making them a little more pronounced. Because these are just kind of random. And I think it looks a little more natural that way. But you can see what's starting to happen. One thing I forgot to mention, before I start painting on this guitar, anytime you're going to paint a guitar, you need to get some masking tape and mask down inside this neck pocket. Because if you don't do that, what's going to happen is the paint will build up and when you put your neck back on, you may run into problems with it not fitting correctly. So just take a little time, put a little masking tape down in there, mask that area off. I'm going to wipe my guitar down with some wax and grease remover. Got everything sanded, got it hung up here where I can get around all sides to paint it. Okay, I figured out the color on my guitar that I want to paint it. So what I did, I came back here. Of course I have a mixing system where I can mix my own paint. And I realize that this is getting a little bit extensive for some of you, you know, do it yourself at home guys, but you don't have to have all of this. You can use spray paint, whatever you want to use. I'm just kind of showing you the process that I go through. But I came back here and I used PPG, got my chip book out until I found a color that is close to what I wanted. And what I found is once I get it pulled up on the computer, which I know you can't see that because the computer screen is not going to show up on the camera, but it shows me all of the parts of what toner I need to put into this color to make the color that I want. So I'm going to get my paint mixed up, 
I'll get one more shot of my guitar before I start putting the paint on. You can see where I've come back and cut out all the little gouges and nicks, made them a little more pronounced. So when we paint over that, it'll be easy to see those and give it some character. Okay, got my paint mixed up in my gun. Already added the reducer to it. And pretty much what I'm gonna do here applies to any type of painting. Um, I know I've got spray gun, spray boot, all that, but even if you're doing this at home with spray can, first thing, you need to wear some kind of protection and not breathe these paints. If you're doing this in your garage or something like that, you need to wear something. Also, when you're putting your paint on, you need to put thin, even coats on. Don't try to put it all on at one time and get it covered with the first coat because you're going to wind up with a mess. All right, here we go. I've got one coat of base coat on here. If you'll notice, it's not covered. You can still see some dark spots through there. I'm not trying to get it covered all in one coat. Just want to get good, even coats on there. Now, if this guitar was going to be something that was really going to be slick and shiny and new looking, I would have prepped the body a lot more. But if you can, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I basically left the blemishes in the body of the guitar itself because I want it to have an aged look, the relic look. That's what we're going for. So I'm going to put probably two more coats of color on this thing and then I'm going to come back and put the clear on it. And when I put the clear on this guitar, I'm not, normally I would use PPG 2021, which is a high solids, high gloss, real thick clear coat. But these guitars, when they did them back in the 60s, which is the look I'm going for, they used lacquer. And it didn't have near the gloss and it wasn't as thick. So what I'm gonna put on here is DBC 500. It's basically just a clear base. It's like a base coat with no pigment in it. And all it's gonna do is cover it and make it even and smooth. And it's gonna have more of the appearance of what lacquer would have been. So put a couple more coats of base on here and then I'll come back, put my clear base on and we'll be finished with the paint job on the body. I got my guitar painted and got the clear on it, which as I said is not actually clear coat, it's like an intermediate inner coat, clear, whatever you want to call it. And got the results that I wanted. The guitar's it's smooth and it's got somewhat of a shine, but it's not too glossy. So it's gonna look really good once we do the rest of the relicking process to it. But this looks more like what lacquer would have looked like. I'll let it dry for a couple of days and then come back and go over these spots where I had sanded it down and wear that come back over my little chips and everything. But so far, so good. Everything looks pretty much the way I wanted it to. It's gonna have that aged look to it and that's exactly what I'm going for.